Hello everyone, today we're going to take a look at a new game I got it's called Electronic Labyrinth. It's from Ravensburg. It's for two to four players, ages eight and up. The game can take anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes, depending upon <clears throat> who you're playing with. Uh, my kids absolutely love this game, and I like it myself because there's a little strategy element to it in pushing and pulling the tiles, which we'll show you. Okay, before we set it up and show you how it's played, here's the contents of the box. We've got a rule book. Um, you've got a board, and there's four playing pieces up there. Tiles that are placed on the board. Underneath this board here, which I'm going to take out, we've got the magic book of spells and a couple cardboard tokens that we need. There's the uh, player boards, which are keys, as you can see. And underneath that are gems that go on the keys. So the insert's good. It keeps the tiles really well. It turns this box upside down, and those tiles stay in there. Um, obviously, the cardboard pieces do as well. So it's a good insert, and let me get it set up. Here's the game set up for a two-player game. We've got red and green. <clears throat> Each player has their key card. Those are the gems. The gem colors don't matter. They just go on the card when you uh, get them throughout the game. When you filled up your key with gems, then you come back to your start position and you win the game. Uh, each player also gets a secret mission. Basically, it's just a card with the color of the opposite corner. So in this case, green is red and red is green. If you were to get over, if green was to get over to red spot over here, they would be able to complete a secret mission and would get them some gems. So the card is just there as a reference point because the board does rotate and move. You can see the board is set up. Um, there's some fixed pieces in the board and then the rest of these are tiles that will slide. So <clears throat> depending upon how complicated you want to make the game for your kids when you start, uh, you can set up kind of a maze or you can put them out randomly. What I tend to do is just turn them face down and flip them over. On the board you're going to notice some special people. We've got the unicorn, the dragon, there's a gnome, a giant, and a fairy out there. They go in those five starting spots, <clears throat> randomly of course, so the giant could end up in the middle. These are the people you want to visit and get quests from. Also out on the board are different items. The items go on every card that has a shoe print on them. So for example, um, this rope here, which I can't find with my finger. There we go. This rope here, there's footprints underneath them. Okay, so the uh, magical creatures of the labyrinth are going to send you out to do various things, and you're going to go ahead and you're going to retrieve things and bring them back. They'll also tell you to take treasure chests. That's what these bigger icons are for over here. So the dragon might say, Take the treasure chest to the gnome and you carry the treasure chest to the gnome and you go ahead and you score and get something for it. <clears throat> um, let's see, what else? Aside from that, uh, you'll notice there's one piece off the board. So on your turn, you're going to do two things. You're going to go ahead and slide a tile into the board. You can see on the outside of the board, some of these spaces have arrows, orange arrows. These are where you can go ahead and slide the tile in in any orientation you want and you just push it in and one comes out the other side so you have to do that on every turn and then you may move as far as you can on your path and do whatever you can in that particular instance okay this is the book of spells and this is what remembers everything in the game so I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on So this is going to play every time you start the game, which can become a little annoying, except for the kids. Um, also, every time you visit somebody, they're going to go ahead and introduce themselves. This button down here is a repeat button. It can also be used to kind of cut this stuff off. Okay, so let's set the magic book to the side here, and let's say it's Green's turn. Okay, so I'm doing this uh, with one hand, so bear with me here. So Green's going to take this tile, 
Now, right now, green has no way to get anywhere. Uh, he's completely blocked off. So we want to try and get him somewhere. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and rotate the tile that's in. And I'm going to slide it in this way. So I'm going to push this in. Sorry for the blurriness of this. Okay, sorry about that. So I slid in the tile there and basically you can see now green has a path. On their cards you see we have a small circle and a big circle. They can carry one item and one treasure chest. Um, basically when you stop at a spot you can do what's on that spot. So I can move green any number of places right now. I can get them to the ring. I can get him to the unicorn. Uh, I can get them to any of those items up there. Uh, in fact, I can get him to about six items. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move him to the unicorn. And then what happens is we grab the book here and we press the unicorn. Welcome. I have been expecting you. I am Sapphire the Unicorn. I came here to rescue the imprisoned adventurers. But Grimalda the Horrible Witch put a curse on me as well. Here, take one magic gem. Please get me the lantern. I am Grimalda. I heard that you want to free the old wizard. I warn you, others have tried to cross me before. And you know what happened to them. So Grimelda is uh, ominous, ominous, isn't she? Anyway, uh, so I was given a gem. So I'll take a gem and place it on my card, like so. And then I believe she told me to get the rope. What's cool about this game, uh, when I first started playing it, I'm like, boy, it's going to be a lot to remember for kids. But not really, because you can press a repeat, or at any time, you can press the button of a creature. Please bring me the lantern. Uh, okay, maybe she said lantern. I wasn't paying attention. Please get me the lantern. Yeah, so she must have said lantern the first time, so good thing I listened again. Um, so basically that's a turn, so the next player would go and so on, and uh, you start collecting things until you get enough items, and then you come back to uh, your start space to win the game. So let's assume that, um... Green has gone and has the lantern and has come back to the unicorn. What you do in this case is when you're turning something in, you press the unicorn. Please give me the lantern. And then you press the give button. Thank you. You will get a reward for this. Take three magic gems. There is also something else I need. Next time, please bring me the magic potion. I've got you now. <laughs> Put your feet into the dungeon. Your turn is over. All right, so I got three gems out of that. Which, whoops, which would go on my card. And then, of course, the witch put me in the dungeon, and that would put me here. And I'd have to maneuver my way out. So that's essentially that's essentially the game uh, in a nutshell. Um, like I said, sometimes you have to bring treasure chests. That's what the bottom button is for. You see the secret mission button there. And then when you complete the game, um, so let's pretend green won after a while here. Got all his gems and got back to the start. You'd come and you'd press that once to open it.
From now on, you may call yourself Knight of the Eternal Sun. The game is now over. Please switch off the book. To play a new game, simply switch the book off and on again. So, as you can see, um, there's one issue here. If one of your kids should happen to hit that key button twice before the game is over, the book resets itself, and you are SOL as far as that game goes, because it remembers everything that you're playing, and when you reset it, you're pretty much screwed. Anyway, uh, really enjoy this game. My kids like it. Um, it makes them think a lot more than some of the card games that we like to play, like Mermaid Beach, uh, because they have to think ahead and rotate these pieces, try and figure out where they're going. Uh, my uh, nine-year-old plays this with me, as does my seven-year-old. So uh, it says ages eight and up, but uh, seven-year-old needs a little bit of help from time to time uh, in terms of thinking ahead and the strategy, but overall... Uh, after a few games, she's picked it up. So I would definitely say this is a try it type game uh, if you have kids. And it might fit the bill for you. The book can get a little annoying, but like I said, you can skip it. Um, if you're an adult and you like uh, children's games, there's plenty of uh, those people out there. I, I have a couple of friends who collect children's games, uh, mostly dexterity games. Uh, again, this is a try. You might like it. Uh, it's like the Labyrinth, the non-electronic version. So, um, good things as far as I'm concerned. Thanks for watching.